we've got to get our lambs off as heavy and as quick as possible, whether through genetic management, pasture improvement, uh, systems like feedlotting. Over the last few years, we've recently um, incorporated a um, feedlotting system into our sheep breeding program. The area that's probably been of most benefit from, from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from the producers in the group is the way they've changed or the way they're, they're thinking about their lamb feedlotting. It's something that a lot of producers do in this area and it's not something they do on an annual basis. It's when we get failed springs like we've just had and a lot of them probably, to be, yeah, to be fair, don't do a great job of it because it's something that they're not doing on a regular basis. One of the big changes that we're trying to get people to think about is, is the cost or the biggest input of, of feedlotting and that's feed. 18 months ago, the feedlot at Simon's was using pellets and we sat down with them and we looked at what's the cost of these pellets and what's the energy and protein we're getting out of them. And we looked at what they were producing on farm. So they're, they're growing their own barley and we have simply done the sums on on what, what the cost of those pellets are compared to their own grain that they're growing. It's higher energy, they can match the protein, and it's about 30% cheaper. We mixed up our own with, with the canola mix, and we pushed that for, I think, three or four feeds, nearly a month, and we were sort of plateauing at a, at a growth rate that just wasn't enough. I, I'm not sure, it was somewhere in the vicinity of 300 grams, which is good, but we couldn't seem to push past that, whereas we switched to lupins um, in a 30% ration and all of a sudden we're picking up another 50, 60 grams per day, um, continually through, through all the pens. We started off with three pens and essentially split those pens into another three each, so we've got nine equal, equal pens. The sooner we could get them into the feedlot, you know, we were tripling their efficiency just by containing them and um, putting them in the feedlot system. They're being fed exactly the same ration, yet they're there for literally a third of the time. One of the major impacts I think we've had in terms of Simon's business is we've really changed the, the approach to inducing lambs and we're trying to make that as smooth as possible, inducing them into the feedlot. So getting them used to that ration and that has huge ramifications for the animal performance in the, in the sort of 60 to 80 days that they're on feed. Minimising the amount of feed that it takes to put on kilograms of weight gain and that's been a, a really positive impact from the, from the Farm 300 project. And I think next year it was going to be a lot easier. We're going to have more pens again. We'll probably extend it another 50% to you know, somewhere in the vicinity of you know, 14, 15 pens. I think the Farm 300 has been fantastic. To open up our eyes to a system that's been available to us for a long time, but we just haven't, haven't sort of reached out and grabbed it, unfortunately. I mean, um, now that we're sort of doing it, it's actually reasonably simple what we've done in the great scheme of things. It's actually quite funny how, how simple it is to set it up, but you know, how big the return is. Same thing again, just making everything so much more efficient.